In this video, we're going to take a look at formatting text boxes. And uh, we're going to take a look at uh, selecting text boxes, formatting text boxes, uh, formatting the bullets, and aligning text boxes. So let's get started. This is a PowerPoint template that I downloaded from Microsoft's website. So most of this is just filler. Uh, slide two here is a text box on the left and a text box on the right. When you click in the text box, uh, the handles will appear around the outside and you'll also see a dotted line. When you see the dotted line, it means that if you want to do any formatting inside the text box, you have to select the text first. So if I want to change some of the text here uh, to a different color, Okay, let's say I want the text to be purple, which doesn't really look very good on orange. Um, but I select it and I apply the formatting commands, and it's just like you know formatting in Word. Uh, I'm going to do Control Z to undo that. Now, the other way to format is if you click on the edge of the text box here, and it goes from a dotted line like it is right now, and I'm going to click now to a solid line. When you have the solid line selected, everything in the text box is basically selected. Any formatting commands that you do are going to apply to the entire text box. So if I want to go up here and make the text purple, uh, it's all going to be purple. If I go over here and click on this text box, and I see when I click inside, I get the dotted line. But if I go up here and get the four-headed arrow and click on the edge, I get a solid line. And now if I click on the color, everything goes purple. So if you select the outside of the box and get a solid line, that's a fast way to format everything that's in the entire text box. Now that's kind of a hard color to read, so we're going to do a control Z a couple of times to get our text back the way it was before. Okay. Now, uh, let's take a look at bullets. Uh, again, I'm going to click on the edge here, so I've got the entire text box selected. And if I want to change bullets, it's real easy. I can just go up here and pick whatever I want. So let's say I want, uh, I think they call this a star. Yeah, star bullets and there's only one thing in here so it's kind of hard to see let's go over here and select the entire text box over here and there's a keyboard shortcut that you can use if you want to repeat a command and this applies not only in PowerPoint but also in Word and Excel if you want to repeat the last formatting command just the very last one you can do a control Y I'm gonna do control Y right now the last thing I did was change the bullets if I do a control Y right now it changes the bullets over here. Okay, so that's another, you know, a lot of times you want to do the same command more than once in a row. Just make sure you don't do anything at all in between applying the command the first time and doing the control Y because it only repeats the very last thing that you did. Okay, now let's say you're not happy with those um, bullets and you want some more choices other than the seven choices you've got here. Uh, go to bullets and numbering and one of the choices you have is you can change the color and so we'll go down here and we'll change the color to kind of a light green and click on OK and now we've changed it and I'm going to go back over here and we'll do the control Y thing again control Y and it reapplies the command uh, you can also do some other things with bullets and numbering uh, it uh, determines the size of the bullet uh, relative to the rest of the text. So let's try to do something that's pretty noticeably different here. Let's go to about 120, which should make it about 50% bigger than it was. Click on OK. And there we go. Now let's go over here and we'll do the Control Y again. And I've got big bullets now. OK. You can also, uh, you're not just limited to these seven, go to bullets and numbering and you can click on picture here. And this works a little differently now than it used to in older versions. Uh, the pictures are no longer stored locally, uh, but you can go out to office.com. And if I just go out here and type in what I'm looking for, you know, before the way this used to work was you just get a bunch of pictures of bullets, but uh, they've made some changes here. So uh, click on that, and obviously I'm going to get more than one kind of bullet here. but. Uh, after I get past this first row, uh, it looks like almost everything is a uh, character that you could use as a bullet character. So let's uh, let's pick something that 
will be kind of big and obvious here. Let's try this one ought to show up pretty well. And click on insert. And now I've got that. And if I go over here and we'll do the control Y again. And it changes all of those bullets for me as well. Okay. And let's try one more thing with our bullets here, and that is uh, if you click on customize down here, uh, it will give you list of items you can choose from here now a lot of times these aren't very good bullet items and the place I think you want to look usually is going to be uh, the webdings font which is an, an entire picture font no actual letters of the alphabet there at all um, and webdings and wingdings and wingdings 2 and wingdings 3 okay so uh, these are things that are more likely to be things that would be good bullet symbols. I don't care too much for these. Let's go to Wingdings too, And let's say that I wanted to have um, what looks good here. Uh, let's do a five-pointed star. Okay. And notice, whenever you pick something here, uh, it has a number, a character code associated with it, uh, a number from 0 to 255. And um, so you can, you can specify uh, specific characters in here if you know the character code that's associated with a given character. So this is character number 234 in the Wingdings 2 font. That's enough to identify it to anybody. If I click on OK now and click on OK again, uh, I'm back to the green because that was the color I had selected. Uh, the yellow here was actually part of the picture itself. Those pictures were colored. And if I go over here and do a Control Y, I get the green stars again so you got a lot of flexibility uh, and all of the options here are really basically the same options that you have in Word with uh, some very minor differences now the other thing we're going to take a look at here is when you've got multiple text boxes like this um, you know normally they come out here and they're aligned with one another and notice when you move this around uh, when you get to the point where it lines up with something else this is probably not going to show on the video but when I get to this point right here uh, a little line comes out of there that shows me where the top of this other text box is so I can line them up that way. Uh, if I move to the left over here, that's a little bit easier to see. Um, I get a vertical line showing me where the edge of that top text box is that has the text course description in it. And if you look down at the bottom there, I can't move the mouse, but if you look down at the bottom, uh, there's a little red arrow showing you what it thinks is an appropriate margin. Uh, if I slide it over a little bit further, uh, the line becomes visible again when I actually get to that point. So uh, it does have a number of whoops, number of built-in features here that make it easier for you to line things up. I want to show you a couple of other options that you've got here as well. Um, if they are not lined up and you want to get them lined up, you can click on the first one and you can um, shift click on the second one. and go to your um, drawing tools up here click on format and then go to align and uh, we got some choices here we can align the objects relative to one another or we can align them relative to the slide and we're going to align them relative to each other and i want to align their tops okay and i'm not quite sure how it decides which one uh, to move but now the tops of both of them are aligned okay um, we can also, uh, these three in here are vertical alignment. I can say align top and whoops, let's say align to slide now. And okay, now I've got align to slide selected. Now if I do align top, it'll align them with the top of the slide. If I do align middle, it puts them in the middle of slide, equal margins on the top and the bottom. And if I do align bottom, it'll put their bottoms along the bottom of the slide. Okay, now you get in some interesting stuff here if you do um, let's say if we do horizontal align, if I do align left, they both get aligned left. And if I do align center, they both get aligned centered. And if I do align right, they both get aligned right, uh, which is probably not what you want very often. So let's undo those last three things here. Um, here's how you can, you can fix that. Uh, let's say that I want to have these two aligned horizontally with equal margins on the right and equal margins over here on the left. So I want it centered horizontally, the two boxes. 
Uh, what I have to do first is, um, well, it's not going to let me group them apparently. No, it's not. So I'm going to have to, uh, for right now, I'm just going to have to eyeball that. Uh, but if you if you uh, select both of them, you know, sh uh, click on one and then do a shift click on the other, uh, then you should be able to uh, move both of them as a group.